Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're taking a look at the FL Sun QQS Pro, but not this one. Roll those credits. So this is the QQS Pro FL Sun Delta printer. I don't like this. Bye bye. This is the Honey Badger. So this is a QQS Pro with aluminium extrusion braces in 2020s with linear rails and with clipper installed. I like this machine. So, um, so okay, so first off, full credit. Um, if you go on, uh, there's a link to uh, the Thingiverse page where we created these brackets so that you guys can do this yourselves. Um, I think it is very, very important to note that the parts that we have here are a remix of somebody else's parts. So the original guy was Konstantin Menahov. I'm 100% making sure that I have made that. <laughs> I have definitely pronounced that incorrectly. But let me just go through what we did. So, um, so first off, we um, the issues we were having were ultimately around ringing, right? Now, we haven't completely solved those yet. And this is really a work in progress to see how far we can take what we're doing. Um, but I think it's important to note that you know that that that's where we that's where we got to originally, right? So that was that that was the original purpose of doing this. It was to try and solve the original ringing, and it was to try and solve the noise. So this machine, when it was running, was just noisy. Like it just made a lot of racket, and it shouldn't do. Now it was a combination of a couple of things. I so I've seen the drivers that I took out of this machine. I think they're A-series drivers. It's possible they're DRV drivers, which are a clone of TMC 2208s. We're not getting into that. But one way or another, I didn't like the drivers. So I changed the drivers in this out for TMC 2208s, right? Um, there was a pre-compiled version for Clipper that, um, that again, we found, we found on Thingiverse, um, made our lives a lot easier because all we had to do was SD card went into the uh, SD card went into the into the machine, flashed the new firmware, put Clipper on, uh, put Mainsail OS um, onto onto the Pi. Um, that worked much easier than I expected it to. Um, and then uh, and then yeah, and then we we got it all uploaded and all started running. There are some sacrifices. So we've lost about 10 millimeters on the outside of the bed, and that's because of how we designed these brackets. So these brackets here, and one second, because I will take off these side brackets and we can take a better look at it. So that is the side plate off. Now, a couple of things. So the way that we mounted these, we have got, uh, we've got a modified bottom and top shoe. That's what allows us to slot in the, uh, the 2020 extrusion. And then the linear rail goes on the front of that. As a result, what we've ended up doing is instead of the uh, delta arms being like this, they're more like this. So we've created them being more vertical, which means they can't go past this point. And this point here is not the outside of this bed. So, um, so we've unfortunately created a bit of a hardware restriction there. And due to my laziness, and it is my laziness, I managed to find four aluminium extrusions on Amazon for about, I think they are about 25 pound or something like that. And I managed to find a set of three two trees linear rails. Now, as a result, I didn't really get to pick the size. The linear rails are probably fine the size they are, but these aluminium extrusions really should have been about 50 mil longer. As a result, they have shortened the whole machine by about 50 millimeters, which means we've lost 50 mil in the Z height. It is what it is, it's still an okay size machine, and frankly, I would rather have it running silently than I would have it 
running at an extra 50 millimeters on the Z. It did mean we also had to modify these. So as you can see, there are these tabs on the bottom of this. You can see that right there. These are threaded and they, th they fit and slot straight into the machine. Unfortunately, because we have shortened this by 50 millimeters, we've had to cut off the top tabs, drill out these, and we're having to use nuts and bolts to hold them to the top. I wanted to keep these on because I feel like they add just a little bit of extra rigidity to the overall machine. Um, the parts that we printed are printed in ABS. You could print them in PLA and they would probably work. We designed them pretty chunky um, and, uh, and as a result, you know, they, they, they work okay. Um, there's one part that we haven't put on our Thingiverse and that is this piece right on the back here. Basically what this part does is it sits on the back where the belt is. It kind of stops the belt from slipping out, but more importantly, it triggers the original Z stops. So the guy who originally did these parts, one, my 2020 extrusions would not fit into the bottom of, um, into any of these brackets. So that wasn't ideal. Two, um, he hadn't made any allowances for the way the Z motors um, screw into the base, so I had to make that. And um, on the on these, he was using optical end stops for the top brackets. We're using the stock end stops, so we didn't need that. Um, and as well, my uh, my carriage on my on my linear rails just wouldn't quite fit into. The, uh, the ones that he'd designed. So I, I, I slightly modified those. Um, all in all, it's now pretty sturdy. And what we'll do is we'll do a quick comparison of what we were like before versus where we are now. Okay, so this one here is the original. And if, you, if I can catch that in the light in the right way, you will see that there is a fair amount of ghosting on the X and on the Y. Bear in mind that this machine doesn't have a traditional X and Y because it's three motors that work in tandem. So vibration on one is vibration on the other. Um, this is the new cube that we've done and the ghosting is much reduced. Now bearing in mind we have clipper, we have not yet used input shaper and we will be. As I say, this is a journey that we're on because we're just trying things at the moment, but I wanted you guys to see what we've done so far. So um, the extrusion is much more, um, the extrusion is much more, if we get that in the light there, get that to focus, there we go. and. The, the extrusion is much more consistent on this than it was before. I'm very, very happy with that. If we zoom out a little bit. Okay, so these were all printed on the new Delta. They were done at a 0.2 layer height. They were all printed at 100 millimeters a second. And I will be honest and say, I am very, very happy with the quality on these. So these printed like this on the bed. So we've got a fair amount of overhang there. There were supports, they were tree supports, but they have come out really, really nicely. And then this, which is the legs for the Doc Ock that we are currently doing, um, these printed in four parts. So two sections for the top, two sections for the feet. These all went on the Delta. These were all printing at 80 millimeters a second. And the surface finish on these is absolutely fantastic. So I'm very, very happy with how these turned out. There's gonna be very little post-processing that I need to do on these. And that's kind of the overarching aim. Okay, so print quality is clearly improved. Um, the linear rails were not particularly expensive because they're two trees ones and they're stainless steel. They're not, they're not high wind rails. Um, the clip for Clipper, I had a Raspberry Pi. Now, apparently that means I'm a millionaire because Raspberry Pi prices at the moment are insane. And I had a Pi laying around. Um, if you're able to get, do you know what? If you're able to get a Pad 5 from Big Tree and the CM4 will run Clipper and Mainsail, Pretty much, pretty much bang on. Um, what's in here at the moment is a Pi 3B, and again, it's doing a stellar job. There is one cav, so there's, there, as we said, we have made a couple of trade-offs, right? We've lost a little bit on the uh, on the perimeter of the bed, and we've lost 50 mil on the Z. The probably more slightly more frustrating loss 
is the loss of the screen. So, um, so Clipper does not, or whatever configuration has happened as a result of this, because we didn't compile the firmware, um, the screen no longer works. When you turn it on, it just says complete now. Um, you can't get Clipper screen to work on that because Clipper screen works off of the Pi, not off of the main board. So I suppose the best it could ever do would be just to display the temperatures it was at or whatever, which, you know, arbitrarily do you even care about? And I challenge no. We only really went with Clipper because this comes with Repetia as firmware to start with. Um, and I will be honest and say, I don't know how to configure Repetia. Um, I tried putting Marlin on it, it didn't go well. The bed leveling was really quite complicated, so I didn't bother with that. Um, as a result, Clipper was literally the easiest way to get this working. There was a pre-compiled firmware to load onto it so that Clipper would work, and it works. So I'm, I was much less inclined to bother playing about with it or bother fiddling with it. Um, the other things that we are going to be changing is we are going to have to take a look at both doing input shaper, but changing the extruder. Now, I want to do a direct drive conversion. Now, we have a Triangle Labs direct drive, Homera clone, um, which we're not allowed to say that it's a Homera clone, but it's super Homera clone. Um, so I think that will be light enough to mean that we could get that we could get that extruder mounted to this, not add any material weight, and once we did input shaper, we would actually be able to we would actually be able to get pretty pretty good results. So that's probably on the cards for something we need to try and figure out how we would do it. Um, other than that, the machine is already performing considerably better than it was before. Um, before we said that, you know, that if you need a quick, okay, middle of the road machine, then the QQS is an absolute, you know, is, is absolutely what you should be going for. Whether or not you want to put the money into this, we had some of these parts laying around. I had the pie laying about. Like realistically, if you actually add up the pie, the rails, the 2020 extrusions, um, you're probably right at around a super racer money. And at this point, this is basically a super racer with clipper on it. So should you really buy one to do these modifications? Almost definitely not. But if you've already got one and you feel like doing these, the link to the Thingiverse will be in the video description. Um, you will need to print your own um, back brackets, but it's quite literally a square with some holes in it. Anybody could knock it up in Tinkercad. Um, we just didn't include ours because our holes are in the wrong place and we ended up drilling our blocks so that we could get them to screw in. That's the only reason why they're not on Thingiverse. If people really want us to upload them, we will, and we'll just upload a block and you can drill them yourself if, that, if, if that's what people need. Um, the Clipper config is, is openly available. You can just literally type FL Sun QQS Pro Clipper into um, into Google and it will pop up as a Thingiverse thing. I will try to find where I got it and if I can find it, I'll put it in the video description. If not, super easy to find it yourselves. Level of complexity doing this, it is kind of, it's fiddly. So um, to get the, oh, by the way, we changed all the belts out for Gates belts as well. We said in our review that we'd actually had, um, we'd actually had all three of our belts on one of our machines stretched and two on this machine stretched. So when we, uh, when we were doing this upgrade, we just changed all of the belts out to Gates belts. They're glass fiber reinforced. And as a result, you know, they won't, they won't stretch. Um, it's what, I mean, it's just worth mentioning that that's what we did. Whether or not you guys want to upgrade to Gates belts is up to you. If your belts are fine, just leave them as they are. You might just trim them down a little bit because again, we lost the Z. Um, on Thingiverse, it does tell you the bill of materials, um, the lengths and everything else. Again, worth noting that right now we have lost 50 mil because of the length of the 2020 extrusions that we were able to buy. They were available on Amazon, they were available next day, so that's why we bought these ones. We should have 
just gone to an aluminium extrusion place and got the right length and everything would have been better probably because for a start we wouldn't have had to have modified any of these side brackets but we didn't and i want to be clear the reason why is because i'm too lazy to do that so that's pretty much what you should expect from this channel um as you can see those upgrades for me have been totally worth it again it's only worth it because we were sent two of these machines by FL Sun and it was relatively cheap for us to do those upgrades. I do not recommend that you go and buy a QQS Pro and do these. I recommend that you go and buy a Super Racer because a Super Racer is better than this. But you do you. So the, 20, the TMC 2208s we put on there, again, I had them in my drawer. It, I feel like they've made a dif difference. The thing is, is I didn't do the upgrades iteratively, right? I did it all at once. So I can't tell you whether putting TMC drivers in there is what's made the difference on the noise or whether it's the linear rails because the rods aren't there anymore. I feel like it's a combination of the two, but it's worth noting that, that this has got TMC drivers in it anyway. Um, other than that, guys, Clipper is super easy to use. Um, it really is quite an easy upgrade, especially if you've already got compiled firmware and compiled printer configuration, which we did, um, because again, it was on Thingiverse. Um, all, the, all, the, all the bed leveling and everything all works in exactly the same way as it did before. We've got slightly more control over things now. Things are much more editable. It's much easier to put things on it. And we can, you know, we, obviously you get the Wi-Fi capabilities and everything else. The print quality has definitely gone up. I think that's relatively clear. Um, and yeah, other than that, we'll just put up a little bit of B-roll footage at the end, just just giving you a giving you a flavor of the uh, of the noise that this is currently making, which is basically non-existent. It's just fan noise now. Um, other than that, if you guys know of any places that are doing either BMG upgrades or whether or not someone's already done a, uh, a Hamera or direct drive style upgrade, we'd be really interested to hear about it and put, sort of put, some, put a comment in the, in, the, in the comment section and we'll go and check that out. But other than that, let us know what you think. So here's some B-roll footage of us uh, printing with it now. And other than that, have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Fixed it.